Hey guys, welcome back to another 5 Academy video. This is Shahir. So, uh, in today's video, we're going to be going through seven really difficult ACT math trig problems. This is one of the very, very common skills that students tend to struggle with, and it shows up a lot on the last 10 problems of the exam. So, it's very likely you're going to end up seeing a problem like what you see here related to like law of sines, law of cosines, special right triangles, similar right triangles, problems with diagrams, uh, finding missing angle measures in a triangle, etc, etc. So it's important that you understand these skills and these rules so that you don't run into roadblocks on the actual test. Um, so what I recommend you do is try solving these problems on your own. You can see all of them here. There's seven of them. Um, try solving them on your own right now, right here. Uh, pause the video and do that. And then if there's any that you get stu stuck on, use the video as a resource to actually uh, review and learn the skill through the breakdown that I'm going to do here. So hopefully that'll help you just learn the skills, right? The whole game here you, is you have to learn the skills on the math test. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get these problems right. Not now, not later on your test. Um, the last thing I'll say, if you want more problems like this, if you want problem sets and, and videos that go over every single skill on the ACT math test, not just trigonometry, then be sure to head to our website. We have problem sets and videos for every single skill on the math and English exam. So you can master them, learn them, and use those skills to your advantage on the test. All right, so let's get right into the first problem. A non-right triangle has side lengths A equals 3, B equals 16, and with an angle of B equals 24 degrees. Which of the following is the angle measure of angle C? So we're given three pieces of information, two side lengths, and one angle. Okay, so let's just draw a, a, a triangle and just just mind you, it's a non right triangle. Okay, so there's this is not right. This is not right. This is not right. It's just three angle measures. None of them is 90 degrees. So let's just say this is three. Let's say this is 16. Again, not drawn to scale. We have an unknown side length called C. We know angle B is opposite of side length B. So let's call this 24 degrees. Again, absolutely not to, to scale. Um, so how are we going to actually solve this? What is the way to do it? So you can either use law of sines or law of cosines. So let's try plugging this into law of sines. Law of sines basically says sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And again, these are lowercase on the bottom, uppercase on top, uppercase is for angle measures, lowercase is for side lengths. So let's see what happens when we plug this in. What you can do is since you have two pieces of information, sorry, you have three pieces of information out of the four that are needed for this little square, right, for this little uh, thing that I cir circled here, you can find the unknown. So we don't know uh, angle A. So once we find angle A, we'll have this entire thing covered, okay? And that'll lead us to find angle C. Once you know two of the angles, right, once we know B and A, we can just subtract from 180 and get the last angle. So that's kind of the methodology here. Um, so I'll quickly just do the calculation. So we'll start with sine A over 3 equals sine of 24 over 16. That means if you multiply both sides by 3, you end up getting sine of A is equal to... I've done the calculation for angle measure A, and that gives me 4.37 degrees. Again, just the way I did that, I plugged all of my knowns into this. That gave me sine of A is equal to all of this. And then you just solve for A by doing an inverse sine of the result of this guy right here, okay? So now all I need to do is do 180 degrees minus the angle measure B, which is 24, minus the angle measure A, which is equal to 4.37. And that gives me an angle measure of 180 minus 4.37 minus 24. So you're at, should be about 151, all right? So in this problem, a triangle has these side lengths, 3, 4, and 4. Which of the following is the largest angle? So what we're going to do is, since you're not given any angle measures, this formula up here, where you're dependent on angle measures, is going to be useless. Um, so if you plug it in there, you're not really going to get anywhere. You need angle measures in order to use law of sines, but in order to use law of cosines, you don't. So let's first draw out the triangle. It's not the best drawing. Let's do this. Okay, 3, 4, and 4. And let's say I label the side lengths, or the angle measures, A, B and C. So the largest angle measure is always going to be opposite of the largest sides. So the largest sides are 4 and 4. So opposite of those, you're going to have A, 
you're going to have B. So A and B are the largest angle measures. And they're both the same because they have the same length opposite side. So all we need to do is solve for A or B. The way you do that is using the law of cosines formula. This is what it looks like. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times cosine of angle B. So we actually know all of the information in this equation except for angle B. And that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for this angle. Now, I could have also set this equation up to solve for A. Uh, it would look like A squared equals um, B squared plus C squared minus two, uh, two BC times cosine of angle A, right? You know all the information here except for angle A. Now, I'm just going to pick one of these. It, it really doesn't matter. It gives you the same, uh, same answer. But let's just go with this one. So um, what we're going to do is plug in for all of these. We're going to plug in side length A is this one. Side length C is this one. Side length B is this one. So let's just plug it all in. 4 squared is equal to... Actually, probably the best thing to do is... So what I just did is I took this equation and rearranged it to isolate cosine of B. So I subtracted these side things over here and I divided everything by negative two AC and that equals cosine of B. Now, if I just do the cosine inverse of, of uh, 0 0.375, I end up with 67.97 degrees. Okay, that's what B is. That's my largest side uh, angle measure. So the answer is E. All right, that's how you do this. So think about it as if you're given enough um, um, angle measures, you can use law of sines, but if you're just given side lengths, you use law of cosines. Um, and there's some variation there, but uh, just keep that in mind. Timothy's backyard is in the shape of a right isosceles triangle. The longest dimension of the backyard is 100 feet, is adjacent to the back of the house itself, and extends 10 feet beyond each side of the house. Based on the below figure, if Timothy wants to fence his backyard, how much fence in feet will he need? There's a lot of information here. So the longest dimension is 100 feet. Actually, let's back up even more. It's a right isosceles triangle. So right isosceles triangle means that A, it's a right triangle. That's going to be 90 degrees. And then isosceles means the hypotenuse is the longest side, as always. But the two other sides are same in length. So really, um, you have like this unique shape where if this is X, this is X, and then you know that's your longest side, that's your hypotenuse, okay? So the dimension of the backyard is 100 feet. That's the hypotenuse, okay? Uh, and it extends 10 feet beyond each side of the house. So this is 10, this is 10. So how much fence is needed? The fence is going to be right here, okay? It's right there. So we're really going to subtract um, 100 minus 10 minus 10, which is this dimension right here. We're going to subtract this 80 right here. Okay. Um, now, all we need to do, if I know this is 100, how do I get these other two, two lengths? Um, what you should remember from your right isosceles triangle is that if this dimension is x and this is x, this is just going to be x times square root of 2. Now, in this case, we know what x is. So let's just call, um, I mean, if you can just plug in a number, for example. So hypotenuse, in this case, is always equal to the leg times square root of 2 for a right isosceles triangle, right? Hypotenuse is always equal to the leg distance times square root of 2. So if I know the hypotenuse and I'm trying to find the leg, all I have to do is divide by square root of 2. So leg is going to equal 100 divided by square root of 2. You can do the calculation. 100 divided by square root of 2 is, I'm just doing it on my, my calculator, it's 70.7, okay? Now we know this is 70.7. This is 70.7. We know we have 10 and 10. So we can just do all the addition. You end up with about 161. So it's 161 feet of fencing. All right, pretty simple. You just got to remember your right isosceles triangle. Another way to remember it is um, you have 1, 1, and square root of 2. Okay, but really it's the same thing. It's just this times square root of 2 every time for a right isosceles triangle. It's also known as the 45, 45, 90. 90. 
Next problem, a right triangle has sides A equals 3, B equals X, and C equals 5, with opposite angles A, B, and C correspondingly. Angle B is 90 degrees, so which of the following is cotangent of A? So first of all, what the heck is a cotangent? If you remember, SOHCAHTOA is sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, co uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So you also have uh, cosecant secant and cotangent which is basically all three of these but you just flip the fraction so cotangent is just equal to adjacent over opposite okay so if i draw the triangle out really quick let's take this make it a little smaller so we're told a few things that should be able to just tell us where everything is so um first of all angle b is equal to 90 degrees so let's just call this one b 90 degrees and then we can assign a or c either way it doesn't matter a b c Okay, so side A is three, side C is five. It's not really to scale, but just go with it. And then B is, side B is equal to X, okay? Uh, and we paired it up this way because the opposite side of angle A is gonna be lowercase a, that's how this works. So what we're asked to do is identify the cotangent of A. So the opposite of A is gonna be three, adjacent is gonna be five. So cotangent is going to equal adjacent over opposite. That's the cotangent of A. Simple as that. All right, we'll move on. Next question, for x such that 0 is less than x is less than pi over 2, aka x between 0 and pi over 2, the expression 1 minus cosine of squared x is equal to which of the following? So one thing you need to keep in mind, this is just based off of a very simple rule, uh, and it is a property of sines and cosines, and that is sine squared x plus cosine squared of that same x is equal to 1. Okay, now what is this sine squared, cosine squared? It's just the same thing as saying sine of x all squared plus yada, yada, yada equals 1. You can plug in any number for x. You can plug in 30 degrees. You can plug in 30,000 degrees. You can plug in negative 5. You can plug in 0. It's going to give you 1 every single time, okay, if you're squaring both the sine and the cosine. All right? <clears throat> Now, if you take this right here and you just subtract cosine squared x on both sides, you end up getting sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Simple as that. Now, there are other trig properties that um, you can learn about, but relative to the ACT, I think this is the most important one that you should know. Again, it's very simple. Um, the only other one that I'll, that I'll give you that I, I think I've seen before is cosine squared of x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2, okay? Again, very uncommon, but just plug in a number for x. Practice this a few times. Try to remember it. If you have a formula sheet, write it down. These are the only two that's, that I'd say you really need to, to remember, if anything. All right, let's move on. Triangles ABC and XYZ are similar. The side lengths of ABC are triple the side lengths of X, Y, and Z. Which of the following describes how many times greater the area of ABC must be than the area of XYZ? So, similar triangles what does that mean so if i have a triangle like this and let's call this abc or actually the smaller one is xyz right so that means my larger triangle is just going to be the exact same thing but it's just going to look like an upscaled version of it okay so this is my a and we have to make it corresponding a b C. So we go A, B, C, X, Y, Z in that direction, in this order, okay? So um, it's just a times three side length increase. So you think, okay, if I increase the side lengths by a factor of three, would I also then increase the area by a factor of three? Well, not quite, because in the area formula, it's not just a one-to-one -one case. You're actually multiplying a side length by a side length, so you're actually going to equal uh, uh, multiply it by nine in this case. Let me show you why. So um, what you're going to do here is just plug in a number, for example. Let's just say the side lengths for this triangle, for example, are all equal to one, okay? So length is equal to one. And I know in this case it doesn't make sense because this is not an equilateral triangle. For a second, just pretend that it is, okay? So that means this one's gonna be three. So if I do my area formula, I get area equals half times base times height. And those base times height, again, let's just say it's all one. Now in this other triangle, area is gonna equal half times three times three. This one gives you half, this one gives you uh, 9 over 2. So you see clearly it's a factor of 9. 
right? It's 0 0.5 versus 4.5. Just to give you a better visualization of what this exact example would look like, um, let's use a 45, 45, 90 triangles, okay? Let's say one, one, then the hypotenuse doesn't really matter. And then let's make another one with this. We'll make it three and three, okay? So again, you see how area equals, this is base, this is height, how this makes sense. And you can apply the same thing here, all right? So it's gonna be a factor of nine. If you double, uh, if, you, if you triple your um, side lengths, you're gonna nine X your area. The two largest angles of a triangle are 91 and 62 degrees. The smallest side length is three. Which of the following is the largest side length? So um, first of all, whenever you're given a problem where you're given two angle measures for a triangle, you can almost immediately you should almost immediately just calculate the last angle measure. So we're given one that's 91 degrees. We're given a 62 degrees. And then you can just calculate the last one uh, just by doing the 180 minus 91 minus 62. That gives you 27, okay? So it's almost a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but not quite. So it's asking which of the following is the, so the smallest side length is three. Obviously that has to be opposite the smallest angle. So it makes sense, right? So three, so which of the following is the largest side length? Largest side length is always gonna be the, high, uh, in this case, it's not actually a hypotenuse. It looks like it, but this is 91 degrees, not 90. So it's not actually a hypotenuse. So um, given that it's not a hypotenuse, we can't use the Pythagorean theorem. How do we actually solve this? So the way you're gonna solve it is you can, since you have all the angle measures, you can use the law of sines. So sine of X over sine of side X, sorry, of over just the side X itself equal to sine of angle y divided by the opposite angle, opposite side length y. So what is the sine? So what is the law of sines? So sine of any angle x divided by its opposite side length, capital X, is equal to sine of any angle y in the triangle divided by its opposite side length y, okay? So in this case, what I'm gonna sign as my x is obviously gonna be x in 91. So let's just plug that in, sine of 91 over x is equal to sine of y. In this case, we're looking for, uh, we don't have to use any, um, so in this case, my y has to be a pair that I know. I wanna have the only unknown in this equation be the item that I'm looking for, which is x. We're looking for the largest side length, right? So what is a pair of angle and opposite side length that I can plug into this, this right here, that'll give me a number that I can actually solve that has no unknowns. Obviously I have this pair right here, three and 27 degrees, the shortest side length and the smallest angle. So I can plug that in, sine of 27 divided by three. Now it's just a matter of solving for X. You can do cross multiply divide, you can do it however you want. So let me just do that really quick. So I end up getting X equals 6.6, .6, which is answer option A. These are the skills that typically give students the most amount of just trouble, right? So again, what I went through is law of sines. And then we went through law of cosines. And then we went through special right triangles. And then we went through, um, what was this one? This was the Sokotoa and Cho Shikau, right? Cosecant, second, cotangent. Here we went through properties of uh, triangles and sine and cosine. Here we went through similar special right triangles and then this is just another law of sines pr uh, problem, but it's just a, a little different taste, a little, little different flavor where you have to really use the knowns that you have and um, identify new knowns that can easily be calculated but might be also easily overlooked. So hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I do answer them every week in the weekly live stream. Um, if you're interested in getting any free content or even problems like this, more problems, more videos like this, where we go through problems, go through skills and teach you all of the skills that show up on the ACT math exam, you should check out the fiveacademy.com. We have a problem bank of well over 2000 problems that, like I said, are sorted by skill uh, with accompanying videos that you can use to learn all the skills. If you feel like you don't have the skill understanding that you really need or want on the test. So highly recommend to check it out. We've had hundreds and hundreds of students that have used it and have had really, really good results. Um, so without further ado, I'll leave it at that. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll talk to you soon in one of our live streams, hopefully. See ya.